John Patton of The Gun Collective on YouTube's latest crackdown on firearms content. That and more on this episode of The Weekly Reload Podcast. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Weekly Reload Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Gutowski. I'm also a CNN contributor and the founder of TheReload.com, where you can head over and sign up for our free newsletter today if you want to keep up to date with what's going on with guns in America. Uh, You can also, of course, buy a membership if you want to get exclusive access to hundreds of pieces of analysis and original reporting that you will not find anywhere else in this world. This week on the show, we are talking about YouTube. Uh, Again, (laughs) we have done this a number of times in the past, but they have changed their firearms policy once more. And it's actually some of the unwritten bits that are perhaps having the most impact on gun tubers. And to talk about that, I have with me this week a uh, popular gun tuber, John Patton from the Gun Collective. Welcome to the show, John. I appreciate you doing this. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to dive into this a little bit. It'll be interesting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Can you tell people just a little bit more about yourself for anyone who, who uh, any of our listeners who haven't heard of you before? Sure, sure. So I uh, shout a lot on the internet for a living, uh, mostly about guns. I release a weekly gun news show called TGC News, where I cover the latest and greatest in the firearms industry, uh, you know, new products, new gu- uh, ammunition, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. I also run a growing event called GunCon every year. Uh, which for the past three years has been at Brownells in Iowa. And uh, I do my own podcast. And, you know, generally when it comes to firearms, the Second Amendment, et cetera, I'm involved in some way. Yes. And you have a, a pretty large YouTube channel as well, right? Yes. Yeah. I, the the channel's at like 300 and I don't know, 60 some thousand, I think. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. That's great stuff. And yeah, it's pretty so, yeah, good. you know, you do a lot of uh, gun industry news, especially do some reviews occasionally as well. That's uh, right. I've been watching your stuff for for quite a long time. Uh, you know, I, I think your work is is, is top notch. But thank you. Today, I appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. And and, um, you know, I recommend people check out the channel if they haven't already. Uh, and and uh, it's a great source, especially for like gun industry stuff, stuff that we, we focus obviously here at the Reload much more on politics, policy culture stuff. You do sure. some of that as well, of course, but, but I think your bread and butter is, is like the latest guns that are coming out, uh, and, and really quality reviews that are, uh, you know, personally, I find, um, to be right in my wheelhouse of, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not just fawning over every gun that comes out. And uh, I, I would say that I, it's cool. the exact opposite. Like yeah. I'm very, very, some people would call me mean. I would call it hypercritical of the the new products that come out and that's which is the right approach yeah and so um you know because and i've talked about that on the show before and we can get into some of that stuff at the end of the 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 episode too but you know there's all kinds of hype and not all these guns always live up to it and there's there's issues in the industry uh that deserve to be uh discussed and and scrutinized but and i think i feel like you do that but you also scrutinize of course youtube's policies that's right. How they affect uh, really there's a whole industry on YouTube surrounding gun content, you know, gun entertainment content, uh, gun review content, uh, and gun politics content. Right. And um, that that has been a I don't know, an uneasy relationship from the start, perhaps. But it, it seems as though it's only gotten harder. And this latest update to the policy, I think, exemplifies some of the problems that uh, people who make gun videos have with YouTube, right? Um, You know, there was a change to the written policy on June 18th, right? And I even talked about this with uh, John Correa from Active Self-Protection on the podcast at the time. We went over some of the direct implications. It it really affected more of your, uh, you know, 3D printed gun channels or um, uh, people who shoot automatic weapons um, usually for entertainment, but you know, there's sort of more direct impact on that. But it seems in that time, since this policy went into effect, there's been uh, an unexpected, I guess, result uh, or hmm. consequence where hmm. YouTube has started to enforce um, in a different way a previous policy that it had. Can you talk? And it deals with sending viewers to certain kinds of, of 
websites, certain kind of retailers. Can you just describe for people what exactly has been going on? So years and years ago, they sort of outlawed, I guess you could call it the, or disallowed the use of a link to gun related websites in the description of your videos. And the workaround that all of us had taken was a verbal uh, call out or a visual call out or something like that. And people have done it many different creative ways. I typically just put it right on the screen, say it out loud. And that has been okay uh, to date. And more recently with this change, they've gone back and said, no, no, that is no longer acceptable. You cannot, you can't say .com or anything like that when talking about a gun related website, retailer, you know, gun maker, whatever, whatever it is, you can no longer say dot com or in, even insinuate that they have a website. If you're saying like using language that like could be construed as this company X that you're talking about sells the product that you're showing, that's a problem now, which hmm. Is not written down anywhere. There is no like we don't have clear boundaries. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of a it's kind of terrible. I mean that's really the best way to put it. It's it's terrible. It's vague, and the the general like gun tuber community, as it were, doesn't understand it. Hmm. And you know you've obviously been on the platform for years and years now doing this kind of yes. content. What has uh, YouTube's communication been with you on this particular point up until now, if if there's been any communication at all? So I, prior to this particular issue, I had zero communication with YouTube for the last eight years. So when I started my channel, it grew pretty fast at the time. And I had a YouTube rep and that person changed jobs. I got, they got replaced and then disappeared on me. Couldn't get any answers. I don't know why, you know, I, I was never told anything. And I still don't have a YouTube rep. I've been on the platform as the gun collective for nine years now. And I don't, I definitely do not because I don't, I'm not big enough. And they only want to talk to the people that have big channels. Sure. Uh, and unfortunately, some of those guys do not do a good job of sharing the information they're learning. Um, so when it comes to communications from YouTube, this recent thing, I actually got in contact with a guy who has a channel called Clover Tack, and he was able to help me uh, get in touch with YouTube and talk about all of this kind of stuff. Uh, you know, just try to learn what the F was actually going on. Hmm. Uh, so before, just uh, I guess a couple months ago, the, no one had talked to you from YouTube about like the way that you've been promoting. Correct. Uh, your yeah. sponsorships. That was, that never happened. Okay. Um, cause I, you know, uh, this has been a common critique of YouTube over the years and most of these major social media platforms, right. That they don't do a good job of communicating their rules with their, the people who make a living on their platform. Right. Correct. Um, yeah. They've never done a good job. Like not once ever have done what I would call a good job communicating with and working with the firearms community. It's always, we, we are always reactionary. You know, the policies get put out and then we all panic. That's how it goes. Can you lay out what, uh, you know, when you made a video on this and, and Hickok 45 is another very extremely popular gun tuber, right? And he, he made a couple of videos on this point, um, where he was, uh, initially extremely concerned that he might not be able to continue on with YouTube. Uh, then he did a follow-up video after, I guess, talking to somebody at YouTube uh, where he was a little more confident that he could work around the new rule or work with the, the new rules. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but he was still pretty, not entirely sure is the, the vibe that you get from the second video. Your video on this, your initial video on this was pretty dire, right? Like you, you're talking about, um, you know, the end of your company and and maybe even broader effects in the gun industry as a whole. Can you yeah. uh, just give us your view on that? So, you know, obviously it's been a few weeks since that, uh, that video got released and I have learned a little bit more, but I still think it's a problem in general because the entire industry feeds off of YouTube, whether they will admit it or not, 
you know, there was when I put that video out, there were a lot of people that said, oh, the gun ex industry existed before YouTube. It'll exist after. Yeah, it will be a much, much different version of the gun industry. Because if you strip away the ways to make any kind of money or pay for it, pay for the content, pay for any of the time and production and effort that goes into it, you basically gut what it what it is. And people will have to stop. They'll have to pivot and do other things. And uh, I think the industry as a whole to date, you know, prior to that was using YouTube as a sort of promotional platform in terms of like almost direct sales or promo code usage or links and things of that, like, you know, some variation thereof, the platform was being utilized as a marketing tool. Sure. And obviously now that's changed in a significant way and the promotions have to change The the ROI is no longer trackable. It's like, there's no way for a gun company to directly quantify the results from a given creator. And that is a big problem for them because a lot of these companies sort of use that tracking. Um, you know, I would say it's a dumb thing to do to directly rely on only one type of ROI, but, that's how a lot of these guys track their spending and that's gone. You just can't do it anymore. Hmm. Uh, because before you could call out where to go. Sure. Call uh, it out. It. Say, you know, what, like for example, I worked with a company called Midwest Gunworks mm -hmm. and you can't say like we showed their website in the promo that I did. You can't show that anymore because that shows that they have a website. It shows that they are a dot com and, and that you can use stuff there. And I don't remember if we did a promo code for them specifically, but I mean, that's a very common thing. That was almost a given that if we were doing a promotion, there's a promo code. And now saying that promo code is a violation of unwritten rules. Is that what they YouTube has communicated to you since since you made your video? Yes. Uh, so essentially, it's like that is part of the sort of insinuation that you can buy stuff. Yeah. So you can't I, I mean, you can try and go around it and you can try and be vague and you might get away with it. I don't know. Uh, I don't think any of us really know now, but yeah. I, I have I have been told that that is part of this thing that we're dealing with. Yeah, and I because you know, obviously I I've I've spoke to YouTube. We have a whole reported piece on this and we have some comment from uh YouTube themselves, but they it sounds like they probably <laughs> operate the same way with you as they, they have been with me, which is a lot of what they're what they told me was on was on background is what we call it. Uh you know, in, in journalism, you have on record, which is quotes and usually I would say on record is a quote that's attributable to a right. person, although a lot of these major companies, including especially YouTube, they don't like to have quotes be attributable to specific people. They prefer them to be attributable to the company generally. Um, so that's what I have in my piece is a on record quote from YouTube as an entity mm -hmm. um, or a YouTube spokesperson who didn't want to be named. Um, and then on background is more a conversation that I'm allowed to report on and to relay uh, what I've been told uh, and to paraphrase it, but not directly quote from it. That's that's one of the, <laughs> the uh, yeah. Yeah. conditions that they put. And that's, again, a common thing you see with these major companies, uh, especially social media companies, which I've, I've been uh, sort of made my voice known that I do not like this practice. I think it is bad for everybody. But uh, and and it leads to stuff like this because that seems to be your understanding. It's close to what I understand from what I was told by two spokespeople at YouTube, uh, which is essentially that they don't want the promotion of websites that sell guns or ammunition. And one of the things that they did clarify to me um, and confirm was that this policy now includes ammunition dealers, not just gun dealers or dealers of certain accessories, mostly like bump stocks and sure. Uh, I guess force reset triggers, things like that. Things that simulate uh, automatic fire in YouTube's view. Um, <laughs> Quote unquote but, simulate. <laughs> right. Actually, I think that in the policy, they say that uh, a bump stock converts uh, semi-automatic into fully automatic, which if, uh, I guess they're not keeping up with their Supreme court. Yeah, they're definitely, is, they're not up on Bruin or anything of the sort. Yeah, they haven't read Cargill yet, which <laughs> explicitly says that's not 
how bump stock works. But regardless, it does simulate, I guess, automatic fire. It's probably fair to say that. Uh, either way, you know, the written policy says you can't link to gun dealers or dealers of these certain accessories. And then ammunition, mag people who sell ammunition magazines that hold more than 30 rounds, because that's, for whatever reason, that's YouTube's high capacity standards. Um, yeah, the arbitrary that, nonsense. It's different from what most state magazine limits are. But uh, regardless, the policy doesn't say explicitly ammo dealers, but they did confirm that it does include them. Uh, right. So Lucky Gunner, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with Lucky Gunner. Lucky Gunner has a very popular YouTube channel of its own. Like, how does that work? Um, but I mean, you they, know, just any, can't, they just can't say dot com anymore. They're under the same rules, I guess. Right? You know, um, it's it's just this. We all now have to go back to how TV used to be. And I don't know, it might still be. I don't watch TV anymore, but it, it's this vague, you know, hey, here's a product from blah, blah, blah. I really like this part, like a little testimonial or a, a hot highlight of a yeah, product. product placement, thanks, I guess. Thanks to them. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's really the only way around it that I've seen. Well, you know, they, they, it was a little more gray when we when I talked to them about it, because I, I did ask them about promo codes and things of that nature. And they did imply that that was probably not kosher. <laughs> I like that. Probably um, not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's like they're they're taking out of the ATF playbook. It might be fine. <laughs> it, it's actually very similar to how ATF has tried to regulate uh, firearms in the, their the approach, which is not an uncommon approach across social right. media, right? With moderation, right. they do not want to give hard lines as policy. They want to allow themselves to have uh, wiggle room on these things because, well, if you, in like YouTube's we were talking view, about before the show, if you have hard boundaries, you'll figure out how to work around them. Right. This is this is YouTube's view of this, and I and I think it's fair to say that this is every major social media platform's view, except for I guess probably now. Uh, X or Twitter, whatever Elon Musk is calling, it, has taken a very different approach uh, to moderation than all the other major platforms. Yeah, but yeah. you know, Facebook, YouTube, uh, for a very long time, their view has been, and it, I, in my conversations with YouTube, it certainly continues to be that if they give hard lines, people, bad actors, will find ways to work around those rules. Um, and so instead, they they kind of want to put forth things that are more general principles. And it seems like their general principle on this particular point, the one that is, has, I think the most impact among uh, people who make a living off of gun content on YouTube is that they do not want anyone to tell their, uh, to direct their viewers where they can buy um, guns and ammunition and, and firearms accessories. So right. uh, anything that, could fall into that uh, does seem like fair game, but they don't say it explicitly. You know, right. they're, they're maybe a promo code wouldn't, but it seems like it would violate the heart of what we're trying to do is kind of the vibe that they give off. Well, the only way to use a promo code is to buy something. Right. And that's kind of the, vibe, the what I understood. And I don't remember exactly what was said to me because I've had a bunch of different conversations about this recently, mm -hmm. but the only way to use a promo code is to buy something. There's no other reason to have it. So that to, right. in in their mind is, you know, hey, there's a website. Go buy whatever. It's it's that yeah. it's exactly what you were talking about. This sort of directing people in a direction to purchase. Although they they did make it clear that I guess sponsorships are not inherently disallowed. Correct. Like you yeah, that, that was my my biggest panic was like we're not allowed to have sponsored content at all. Right. which is a huge effing problem because uh, I would say that 90% of my videos are demonetized or limited ads or whatever the, whatever they're calling it this week. Hmm. You know, like, yeah, I, I don't, in, in terms of ad sense, my channel, even though it has good numbers is not bringing in a ton of cash. Right. So if we were not allowed to put those sponsorships in the videos, it would literally kill my business. Right. And that's the problem that uh, I, that I think all all of you guys who are doing this full time, because uh, obviously we have a YouTube channel at the Reload, uh, we, but we don't really make content specifically for YouTube. There's not been an area of focus for us to this point. Uh, maybe uh, hopefully it will be. It's uh, down sure. the line. We have more resources, but but you guys who are doing it full time, who are who have who have had success with this, um, that I mean, 
it's like a sort of Damocles, right? Hanging over you is, is what it, it seems like from the outside here. Like YouTube, um, if you run afoul their policies and you, you know, your whole business could be gone because the, the problem is most of the moderation is automated, right? And you have, I would imagine like a lot of channels, thousands of videos, a backlog of thousands of videos. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, if, if a policy change happens or they renew their efforts and enforce, cause that's, that's how they're, that's how they're framing this move, right? It's not so much that the policy changed. <laughs> it's how they're enforcing the policy that's changed. Cause right. the tw they put it in, in 2018 that you couldn't link to places that sell, uh, you know, regulated goods basically is, is what they're talking about. Uh, you know, firearms and ammo and so forth. And, um, so they haven't changed that policy. They've just changed how they're enforcing it or the emphasis of enforcement. And the, the issue is like, if you have just three videos out of the thousands that they determine uh, generally on first pass by a, a robot, right? Uh, some sort of algorithm determines this, uh, that you've violated these policies, you can get a channel strike and three channel strikes in 90 days and you're gone. And that can all happen almost instantaneously, right? That, that's the, oh, yeah. that's yeah. the big worry here, isn't it? It's not like you're you're only going to get one per day or something like that. Like you, you do, it, they you could literally get three strikes instantaneously. Right, and then and, your challenge is gone. Right, and then you're gone, and you're you're reactionary. Like I said, I I think one of the scariest things about this is that you we really don't have anybody at YouTube to uh, like. I'm fortunate that I was able to get a contact, but like I, I'm speaking about the community as a whole. A large majority of the the people out there doing this do not have any recourse, and all it takes is, you know, a a bot or whatever to crawl your channel and find something it doesn't like based on some machine you know machine learning nonsense that was pumped into it. Somebody typed it in wrong or whatever. It flags your stuff. Then you've got a problem. Then what other things have happened many times over is people in other countries are you know, sort of saying, yes, this is a good thing for the machine or it is not a good thing for the machine. And given that, that's a bigger problem because we're, we're talking about American rules and regulations and we've got somebody that lives under, you know, a dictatorship making comment on these and saying yes or no. And mm -hmm. I think, to be fair, one of the most difficult things that YouTube is up against is they are a global platform. So they have to try and do these policies and craft these policies in a way that the entire world can function under. Hmm. I think the issue is that I would venture to say that 99.9% .9 of gun content on YouTube is in America. The rest of it is very limited. There are a few in other places, but it's very limited. So you would assume as a reasonable individual that they would work with American gun content creators to craft an effective policy and have these, these two way conversations. And they just don't. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you're talking about that sort of second level. Once it's past the robot moderation and the algorithm yeah. moderation, you get to a sort of, um, usually these play how most major social media um, platforms work is they have like an hourly, paid uh staffers not really staffers usually they're like um it's a contractor of yeah, some contractors sort. that they pay minimum wage or they might be even foreign contractors that are paid very small amount to to be sort of the human uh you know second level well, so they process. can say that they had a human look at it yeah and then you're getting pretty far up the line before you get to somebody who actually sets the policies and and the problem you can also face uh, as we saw last year uh, in, in another story where that that uh, we we did on on the reload where we talked to YouTube, uh, sometimes the that mid level management even beyond the the hourly workers, uh, you know your sort of mid level enforcement management at YouTube can be just wrong yep. in how they're interpreting the rules. Uh, that this happened with silencers or sound suppressors uh, last year, and that caused a huge ripple effect throughout all the the gun tuber spaces where people were scrambling to delete videos and repost them and try to figure out exactly what it was that 
was causing the the strikes because it wasn't clear for a while. And then YouTube came out and said, this was just an error on our part. We didn't, uh, you know, some, somebody got the wrong message on how this was supposed to be enforced. And, and that's what created all the, the drama. Um, so, you know, and look, it's, I will say for YouTube's sake, it is not easy to moderate a site like YouTube. There, of course. There are more, uh, there's like hours of footage uploaded every second to the website. I don't know what the actual breakdown it's, is, but it's, it's more it's than humans can comprehend. So it is a difficult process to do. Um, and there, you can obviously see the logic in trying to keep their enforcement rules vague, especially because they, that, you know, YouTube has to deal with much more serious things than, you know, whether or not, uh, Hickok 45 is, you know, posting a, uh, like a, a video with a bump stock or whatever. They're, they're, they're worried right. about like somebody live streaming themselves, murdering people. Cause that's happened on the platform uh, yeah. or yeah. On other social media platforms. And they're worried about like, you know, even more horrific things that, that they have to deal with, uh, uh, you know, across the gambit here, uh, you know, and then they're not great at even handling the things that everyone agrees should not be on the platform, you know, st stuff that, uh, you know, exploitation of children and things like that, that ends up on there that, it, that nobody wants to see on there. Well, I mean, um, to, to be fair, they welcome exploitation of children in the toy space. You know, well, these sure, toy review I, channels and all that, like that's pure exploitation of children. I know what you're saying, but like, yeah, you, if you I really you look mean. at this, they there, you know, from my position, there shouldn't be any children on the platform at all other than in like their parents' videos. But like mm -hmm. even this, then, that I don't know, it, that's a whole rabbit hole of, yeah, of I like just, a, it's more of a I mean moral is, discussion. Yeah, of course. Um, uh, all I mean is that there, there, there's a lot of content out there that gets put on YouTube that uh, the vast majority of people would would agree should I mean people should be arrested and go to jail over you know what I mean sure, and sure. they have trouble with uh you know keeping that stuff off the site uh so it's it's not easy running uh a giant platform like that uh but at the same time that's you know it, you have to give people some level of reliability if you want them to build businesses on your platform right that that's what it comes down to and um you know, it just seems oftentimes they struggle with that. I will say, you know, the, the last two big blow ups here, YouTube has tried to do some outreach. You know, they've talked to us at the reload. I, I don't know. If, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm glad that they do that. I think while I have critiques of how they do it, uh, <laughs> it's better than if they weren't talking at all. Right. Um, uh, and so maybe there's and, you know, you've been able to get in contact with them, other gun tube creators, which like. As big as the gun tube space may seem to us, it's pretty small compared to many of the other uh, parts of YouTube. So there, you know, there's maybe some encouragement in that. Uh, and I will say that I've talked to them in my conversations with them on, uh, you know, stuff like how, <laughs> like how how people can be competent in the moderation. Uh, you know, that they they don't really have a great answer. I think they know that there's an issue. Uh, that this can be a problem and that the best they can offer is like, if you run into issues where YouTube is like falsely flagging your videos or striking you or deleting your channel um, when it shouldn't have the, you know, their hope is that you'll be able to reach um, a human to interact with. <laughs> and hope. yeah, I don't know. That's I mean, how imagine, I would imagine a guy that has, you know, I don't know, 10,000 subscribers or even a thousand, like a yeah. smaller, newer channel that's trying to grow. They've got nothing. They've got nothing. They probably have. It's very likely that they have limited contacts within the gun tuber space because they're still young and they're still growing in the space. So this idea that, you know, somebody could get a hold of YouTube at all is almost laughable. Like, I'm very lucky that I have been around a long time and know most of these guys that have direct lines into YouTube. You know, like I'm yeah. very, very lucky to have that. Most channels do not. And, and, and I think I'll that's say, the issue. Yeah. And I agree. Like, I, I, and I'll say the, with the silencer problem that they had oh last gosh, year, what a nightmare that was. Um, after I wrote my story that included quotes from YouTube, I ended up becoming a sort of, Un, un, unwanted third 
uh, you know, a, a contact point for the company. Cause it's like, people would reach out to me with the problems that they had yep. related to this issue and uh, want me to forward things on and YouTube would accept forwards or whatever so sometimes or whatever. Respond well, if you it. look through the comments on the video I've recently made, the one we were talking about, there's a whole bunch of people in there from all it's, it's not just gun people either. Yeah. Hey, I had them delete X, Y, Z video for me. I can't believe it is. My whole channel's gone. There's been a bunch of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, I really don't know why they, I, I suggested them they should try and like find an industry group or somebody that they could talk to that they could funnel these complaints through because, because I don't, I'm not an intermediary. It doesn't make sense. I'm a reporter. Like why, you know, they need to have a, a better process for that. I think. I mean, I, I am very fortunate that I put on an event that has an enormous amount of content creators. I, through that, I know a lot of these content creators and can communicate directly with a lot of them. I would be happy to work with YouTube instead of reacting against YouTube. I would love to do that. You know, the same the same could be said about any any sort of governing body or or anything like that. If if they would rather work with than against, it would be great, but they don't make the effort. Yeah, you know, I asked them how they come up with their policies, right? How they determine <laughs> these policy changes. Well, you see, they've um, got a dartboard and they just <laughs> throw shit at it. <laughs> and that is what that's the general feeling I've gotten from gun tubers. I mean, I had Ian McCollum on the show a while back talking about these exact same issues. I've had John Correa on, uh, you know, some major gun tubers. And they all seem to feel the same way about the firearms policies that YouTube sets, which is that they don't seem very well informed on the issue that they're trying to mm -hmm. regulate on. Um, and that's been a common critique. Right. And um you know, so I, I did ask them in our conversation, how do you make these decisions? Do you consult with any expert groups or whatever? Uh, and also there was speculation that the, the most recent update was uh, was related to, um, you know, specific events like, uh, like sure. the, the Trump assassination attempts because the, it, the timing lines up, was, was the timing lines a, up, was wearing a, a, a demolition ranch shirt uh, wildly because it's like not the if you were going to pick like a, a gun tuber uh, that a potential assassin's shirt should be wearing, it's not, that's not the one I would have guessed, but right, uh, right. And it doesn't seem to be any sort of a connection. I definitely thing. would have called Brandon Herrera's shirt more than Matt's. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know about for a Trump assassin, but, but yeah, no, I mean, but, uh, you know, if they're going to be a I gun tuber, yeah, that's like, a, it's a young just not person. A, Demolition Ranch is like your, you know, they're, 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 entertainment channel. It's not yeah, absolutely. political very much at all. Uh, but either regardless, um, you know, and then obviously there was also uh, a letter from um, uh, the district attorney of the, of Manhattan, Alan Bragg, that was trying to get YouTube to make some of the changes that they did make. Mm. Uh, YouTube claimed that that's, that those weren't related. Oh, sure. That, that, that their policy was in, um, you know, production for months beforehand. Uh, and that they also said that they consult with internal and, and external experts, uh, you know, stakeholders, they called them from law enforcement. And uh, we'll see the problem safety. is if they consult with experts, they're not consulting with gun experts. They're consulting with law enforcement. And yeah. generally speaking, law enforcement doesn't know a damn thing about firearms. And they, they wouldn't say, of course, they, exactly why, they if they gave away their, their sources, those people would be then, hounded over you know being involved and in not making it better mm -hmm. i mean i would bet i would bet that we got a version of the policies that are the least terrible at this point because they very well over the years could have just shut it all off yeah which is kind of weird you know like you gotta figure they've they've sort of allowed us on the platform i've been on the platform in some way shape or form for 13 years Right. So you would assume somewhere in that 13 years through all of these shooting events and all of this nonsense that happens, if they had a major problem against gun content as a whole, they would have just shut it off. Yeah. And that is one of the counterpoints that you hear, it's especially super from people weird. like John Correa. Um, you know, YouTube doesn't need to allow gun content on its platform at all. Uh, although, they, you know, but at some, also at a certain point, if you're making it so hard to make money doing this on on the platform, it's just going to incentivize people not really doing it uh, very often. Sure. Uh, so it is, it is a bit of an odd situation. They are, 
and and you know as evidenced by them talking to you talking to Hickok 45 uh, talking to other members of the, of the uh, gun tuber community um uh insofar as such a thing you know exists they uh seem to have some interest in trying to keep people coming back um they just also have these rules that tend to be pretty vague and and uh and they shift a bit and maybe don't make a whole lot of sense if you look at them too closely. But uh, I don't know. What do you make of it all? Where's like, what do you see as the future for oh, the gun collective for gun content on YouTube? I mean, I'm always searching for the latest and greatest place. I mean, we've as a gun community, we've been lied to or misled about what platform is going to be the next place, because as long as I can remember, YouTube has been making policies against our content and reducing what we can do and reducing how they uh, sort of accept who's what's allowed on the platform, who's allowed, et cetera. Um, so I think, I think it's right now we're all kind of in a holding pattern going, okay, well, when does this really come down? When are they, I think we all expect it to happen. It's just a matter of when I have backup plans. Everybody has their own version of a backup plan. I'm on rumble. I'm on float plane, which is a Canadian tech YouTubers, yeah. uh, sort of Patreon thing. Linus tech uh, tips. Right? Yeah. Linus tech tips. Those guys are great. They accepted, uh, me on that platform. They accepted Ian from forgotten weapons on that platform. They are not anti-gun. In fact, I, I, uh, was tweeting with Linus about it and went, you know, when this happened and he said, we will always allow stuff that is legal on our platform, which was like, oh my gosh, what a stance to take, right? right. What a stance. And uh, I, I think a lot of people are just really scared and exhausted from all of this, because if you think of it this way, if we all could do what the car community is doing, Right. That is a huge, huge portion of YouTube. If we could freely grow our businesses to the scale that some of these guys have done, it would be amazing. Like, you know, earlier we were talking about how we're both car guys. And if I could build a range somewhat similar, like what Cletus McFarland did with his racetrack, wouldn't that be incredible? Hmm. Wouldn't that be amazing? Yeah. But, you know, we are. There have been a few that have grown successfully in the entertainment side of the gun tuber space. But, you know, I, I feel like we are being shoehorned further and further and tighter and tighter into a corner. Yeah. And I don't know what the future is. I, I know I like I have to be on six different platforms at all times. I have to be commenting all the time. I'm a one like I have a video editor, right? Everybody knows about Izzy, my video editor. All of the other stuff for the business is me. I can't afford to have employees and I can't afford to grow. And it's uh, it's stifling. It's stifling creativity uh, creatively and it's stifling as a person. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's not the feeling. Uh, yeah. We, similar struggle over here at the, at the reload. It's not an easy, not an easy business to do this on your own, but uh, you know, as Linus said in, in his, you know, they, they talked about this on their their podcast or their live stream that they the Land do, Show, the, the Land Show, yes. And uh, you know, basically, his advice is that alternative platforms don't work. Uh, is that how you feel as well? A hundred percent. They've never worked. Yeah. Uh, we have seen sites like uh, th those that have been around a long time in terms of watching gun content will remember a site called Full Thirty, and that was uh, stood up by some of the major gun tubers and it quickly fell apart. There were issues with, you know, the back end in terms of like functionality, because, you know, here they're going, Hey, we're a competitor to YouTube. And it wasn't, it was barely 1080, but you couldn't do 4k video. The comment section was terrible. The monetization was terrible and it, you know, changed hands and owners many times and now it's not even called the same thing and it's a shell of its former self. The problem with these quote unquote pro gun platforms is they, they are not good at bringing on anybody but gun channels. You know, like I, I will, I will say that rumble is not a viable replacement for YouTube at this point, although they are trying and all this because they are heavily right wing. They are heavily political as a platform. And right. because of that, it shuts out 
this whole other group of people that either A, are the opposite viewpoint, or B, don't give a crap. So if you are focusing in as a platform on one segment of a person and only one hobby and only one thing, and you're saying, we do this really well, it will not be a competitor to YouTube. It is not possible. People are more than one thing. They're multifaceted. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, YouTube is where the people are. It's also uh, very hard to to run up a, a competitor with a well You would need trillions site. of dollars, yeah. trillions of dollars to accelerate fast enough to get the server space all around the world, to have the infrastructure. That It's just unreasonable to assume that somebody could come in and knock YouTube off their pedestal. The only thing yeah. that's going to do that is going to be YouTube itself. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, you could even look at it smaller space like live streaming and look at Twitch, mm -hmm. which isn't really even doing that well as a company, but it's uh, all the attempts to uh, stand up a competitor, even by major companies like Microsoft had a Microsoft created Mixer and they signed away <laughs> Ninja, yeah. and like oh, in the streaming space, this is a big deal. And it went nowhere. Like, it's just very hard to challenge these giant uh, near monopolies in, in these spaces and uh, you know, YouTube is where people are for if you wanna make online video content and it's right. difficult to go elsewhere. I, I think that makes sense. And, and that seems to be the conclusion that uh, the major gun channels, uh, you know, the, the biggest ones have, have come to as well. I mean, Hickok45 talked about that in his uh, videos on this subject too. So it just doesn't seem like YouTube is going anywhere anytime soon, but, uh, but perhaps it's becoming increasingly difficult to, um, you know, make make a, a living as a gun creator on there, uh, though not impossible, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm able to survive. You know, I I am able to make a living currently. It's just uh, how long does that last? Mm -hmm. And with these new policy changes, how does that affect my bottom line? You know, are we able to fill all our ad space? And I'm very fortunate again that I've been ahead of the curve in terms of being on the platform for a long time and having a decent sized audience. So that allows me to have multiple outlets and, and these, these different mm -hmm. strategies. Whereas a, a guy that's growing right now, they don't have that. Yeah. It's, it sucks, man. It, it really does. And I don't, I don't know, man. It, it's, it's something that I think about every single day and I don't know what the future holds and it's pretty damn scary. Yeah. Yeah, well, look, I, I appreciate you coming on and, and giving us your insight and, and you know, really telling us how things really are over the, you know, as as somebody who who focuses on YouTube primarily for uh, their gun gun related business, you know, it's uh, and, and and YouTube is really a behemoth, I think, for gun culture too. Like it's you don't have oh, absolutely YouTube, uh, that modern American gun culture would change quite a bit. Uh, it's unpredictable how it would go, but it'd probably be uh, bad for uh, the gun the gun owning community i would assume well you uh, no, know I mean, you sort remove, of come up somewhere else but you know no, you remove the see. ability to educate mm -hmm. right by by getting rid of one of the most prolific outlets for gun content right now despite being pushed back we are you know the youtube gun community is still one of the largest ways and fastest ways to learn about firearms in the world. So if you remove that, you basically silence gun owners as a whole and mm. revert to where we were 20 years ago and culture will not, it'll just forget about it. It's mm. moving too fast. And I don't think people will suddenly like if, if YouTube said, Hey, there's no more guns. I think gun content creators would panic and move somewhere else, but I think society as a whole would just move past it. And that's pretty bad. Interesting. It's pretty bad. All right. Well, look, uh, if people want to hear more from you and, and see more of your work, where, where can they do that? Just get on your Google machine and you punch in the gun collective and you'll find me on your favorite platforms. I'm everywhere. I make a lot of content. I shout a lot. I talk a lot of crap. <laughs> find me. It's going to be fun. Awesome. And, and you're in, uh, you're in Pennsylvania, right? Yes, sir. Mm, this is, uh, like a rivalry thing we have. Here yes, then, it is. I'm from Downingtown, Pennsylvania, 
which is in the same high school division. We were actually in high school at the same time, uh, I believe. I don't, I don't know what so. you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but we were right around the same age. Us and uh, Matt Ryan and Miles Teller, all uh, in the same <laughs> high school uh, yeah. football division. And I went to, this, I mean, uh, well, what's his name? those Rip. two moved away before and got we, had, we should have uh, moved. You know, that's the thing. We should have moved. Yes. Before high school down to somewhere else. That's what those two did. And Taylor Swift too. Taylor Swift is also from our area. Grew up on a Christmas tree farm. That's not just a song. She really did do yes, that. It's, um, it's actual truth. Uh, Rip Hamilton they went moved to away high school with me as well. He went to Connecticut. And then I think he played for the Raptors. I don't know. An NBA guy uh, mm. graduated the year before me, I think. I don't <laughs> remember. Weird. Yeah. Weird. I mean, but, I, you know, Taylor Swift, Matt Ryan, Miles Teller, Stephen Gutowski, John Patton. <laughs> it's all the same. It's all the same. same. Same level. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, uh, that was a big football rivalry. Uh, yes, it was. Very much so. And if I'm not so. mistaken, we beat the crap out of you guys every damn time. No, I don't, I don't you know are that's very true. I don't know if that's, that's true. That's not true. <laughs> Good times. Good times. So it's uh, over the years and we're back. We end up in the same industry, basically the same, Super same area of interest uh, as professionals. Uh, but I live down in Virginia now. So, okay. Uh, although my mom, the farm is still up there in Chester County. So uh, maybe next time I'm up, we'll, we'll have to do some shooting. Dude, I'm in. I'm up there. Next time you're up here, let's go. All right. Sounds good. All right. Well, that's all we've got for you guys this week. Uh, we will see you guys again real soon.